Should you play Ghost of Tsushima? Yes, you fucking should. Hi my people, it's your boy, Shellfire Desu, here with your disclaimer bit of the video. I fully intended to make a review for this game by the end of the month to cap off my weekly schedule in July, but considering that I've only just entered the third region and I'm actively hunting down all the side shit, rather than just taking a chunk out of it then mainlining the story, I'm definitely not finishing this little hit piece within my time frame. Thusly, consider this video a first impression rather than a full on review, which I'm definitely still working working on because fuck me, this is some good shit right here. So there's not going to be any of the real world history nor any of the background stuff of the studio and the people that worked on this project like I'd normally throw in at the start of my reviews. This is going to be me rambling about how much I like this glorious piece of media. Like, first off, can we take a moment to appreciate how utterly stunning the art of this world is? If a game is a series of frames, and frames are classed as pictures, and the good old saying is a picture is worth a thousand words, considering that this game, running on some pretty old tech at this point, is worth billions of words, just based off how cinematic and artistic its direction and landscape are painted. You need to take a whole lot of one second looking at the hashtag for this game on Twitter and you'll be flooded with pictures of the screenshots people have ripped from the photo mode, and Jesus if you couldn't use most of these as wallpapers on your PC. To further that point, I'm pretty bad at taking photos and making stuff look good, just take my thumbnails as an example, and I'm even less intuitive with photo modes. Spider-Man never touched it. Red Dead Redemption 2? Not for a fucking moment. But in Ghost of Tsushima? Just fucking look at it. I can't really comment that much on the story itself, but Koten Khan is a suitably detestable villain, one who uses only the best bloody tactics to break the spirit of a culture that uses honour and facing their enemies head on as a crutch. After all, there's no rules in war. I mean, not at the time of this particular war anyway. Jin Sakai is set up for one hell of a character arc and the fact that it's done at a pretty slow pace and the player has a fair bit of active involvement makes it even better. Also, I just love a good character shift with someone willing to sacrifice everything for the sake of their goal. All of the side characters are pretty likeable and have some pretty good side quests tied to them. Lord Shimura is a bit of a spineless coward who can't abandon his pride to win a war destroying his country, so there's that. One thing I do vibe with is the combat, because while you can be a one note stone stance dick, it definitely isn't the most effective approach you could use. Switching stances mid-combat to properly engage the enemy you're facing adds more than a couple layers of fuckery to the proceedings. Using a lance combative stance against the shield bearer is doable, just not ideal. Considering that you've got an extremely satisfying and effective combo that you can rip out at the right moment to utterly annihilate their posture bar and open them up for a good dose of damage. The same can be applied for most enemies who aren't shooting or throwing shit in your general direction. You've got a stance for swords, lances, shields, and the big boy brutes, and there aren't too many situations in the game where you'll be fighting solely one enemy type, although it can happen in the open world. Speaking on that open world part, not only is it a sight to behold, there's a fair bit of exploration and side stuff to do, some of which just gives you a fancy headband. Other parts boost some of the charms you gain from the actual side missions you can log in your journal. All of which you can just explore the beautiful landscape and naturally discover on your journey. Or you can set a waypoint and have a literal gust of wind point you in the right direction. Ghost has a massive commitment to trying to showcase its environment and art design as you play through its world in as natural of a way Way as it can without kneecapping itself in the process. The quest markers aren't super intrusive on the HUD, everything in your inventory that isn't a coat of paint can be accessed with a trigger push and the face buttons. It's just a nicely designed and clean game that doesn't get in the way of the pretty pretty backdrop for my photo. Okay, yes, 
actual opinions. Ghost is fucking great. The gameplay is nice and weighty and developed for two different styles of play, which tie nicely into one another when the stealth gets boring because that shit is OP as fuck. The side missions can get a little bit repetitive in the form of track an item, find the enemy, kill the enemy, go back to original quest giver, but they're varied enough that they're all fun experiences to kill a little bit of time in between the major story encounters and a good opportunity to level up your gear. What I've heard of the soundtrack is exactly what I expected from a Japanese setting to be completely honest, but I can't wait to hunt down my personal picks for the review. From what I've seen of the narrative so far, it's a pretty good story. The characters change over time without dramatically ruining their personality. The plot is rolling along quite nicely and I think it does a pretty good job at spurring you to complete the side stories with the important characters that are tied to the plot. Ghost of Tsushima is the sort of game you'd sell a system on. You can put that on the fucking cover. If you needed to convince your friend to buy a PS4, this would be a fucking great jumping off point for them. Do I actually think it's going to to be the goatee? No, because there's still one massive bad boy that has yet to come out, and you can't hand out medals halfway through the race. With this video, that's going to wrap us up for the month of June, the heaviest workload month I've ever had for the channel, and we'll be moving comfortably back to the bi-weekly schedule of videos to give myself a little bit of breathing room to work on the big project. With that, I have been the infamous Sir Hellfire, you have been my lovely brethren. If you've got a PS4, go buy this game. Next video should be about a game that features an angry lesbian. Y'all have a lovely day now. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.